Hey Mini Charms and welcome back to the Kenwood Kids Club streaming live from the Mr Baker's Cakes Kitchen. I say live but actually this week might be another pre-record job just because there's lots of bitty bits to do as you will see but I've got a really fun recipe for you this week. You'll notice first of all that I haven't got rid of the Halloween decorations yet and there's a reason for that. This week, I'm going to show you what you can do with your leftover pumpkin and turn it into something really delicious. Now, I might have uh, overindulged over the last few days with all those lovely, delicious ca uh, Halloween candies and sweets. So this is going to be a recipe that will warm us up, make us feel good and get us nice and cozy in the kind of cold weather that started arriving. Now, as I say, there's lots of bits to this recipe. It's not hard, there's just steps to follow. And the first one you're going to need to do is prepare your squash. Now, the reason why I've called it squash rather than pumpkin soup or butternut squash soup is they're all very similar. They have a very similar flavor profile, if we're sounding chefy. They taste quite similar. And so, if you have leftover pumpkin, like I do, you can absolutely use your pumpkin in your soup. If you don't, you can use butternut squash, spaghetti squash, any squash that you have or that you enjoy eating, and it will taste really, really yummy. Now, I'm actually using butternut squash today just because it's a real tricky... Squashes generally are quite tricky to peel and chop. Um, particularly pumpkins because they've got quite a thick, tough skin. Um, butternut squash is slightly easier, but it's still pretty tricky. And I'd really recommend that you actually get your adult to do the peeling and chopping and de-seeding of your squash, whatever type you're using, or they can even buy it ready peeled and chopped as well. So it's up to you what you decide to do. As I say, I have just used a butternut squash and I had one that was just over a kilo. And I've peeled it, I've removed the seeds, I've chopped it up into kind of good sized chunks. And all we need to do to prepare this is add two tablespoons of olive oil and a really good, decent pinch of salt and, if I can reach it, pepper. And then we're going to get mucky because we're going to put our hands in here and just kind of move everything around so that that oil covers all of your squash, whatever type you're using. Now what we're doing is we're coating them in the oil so that we can then roast them in the oven. So the other thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 200 degrees, which is 180 degrees fan or about gas mark six, I think. And then this can go from this bowl into a roasting dish like that and you want it kind of in one layer so ideally you want a roasting dish that's going to be big enough for you to have one flat layer of squash and the part of this video i didn't think through is that i've now got really mucky hands but never mind so there we go so that's what mine looks like and you can see it's all nice and shiny because it's covered with the oil and you can see the pepper and the salt dotted around all over it as well so once you get to this stage and your oven is nice and hot, I want you to pop this inside for about 30 minutes and around about halfway through, get your adult to just take the pan out and kind of turn everything over using a couple of forks or a, a spatula, something like that. And that will just make sure you get a nice even roast over the whole squash. So I'm going to go and pop mine in the oven and then while it's in there, I'm going to show you what you need to do next to make your spicy squash soup. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so hopefully your squash, whichever squash you are using, is in the oven. And so now it's time to make the next part of our soup. First job, we are going to get a large pan. And I've got a very large pan here. And it will all become clear as to why, because we're basically going to make the rest of the soup in this huge pan. You don't need a lot of ingredients for this bit, but what you will need are two red onions, either one large fresh clove of garlic or on the recipe I've actually popped down some garlic puree because this is the sort of thing I always have in the fridge and that way if you don't have any garlic it's not the end of the world you can use the puree instead. You're going to need some more olive oil, some butter, more salt and pepper for seasoning and the spicy bit of our spicy squash soup, some chilies. 
Now your first job is going to be to finely slice your onions. And we've done this so many times right here on the channel. I think we did it first of all in our hidden veg pizza sauce recipe. So if you haven't watched that one before, you might want to go back and check that one out just to check that you're chopping really safely. But as always, we start by peeling off those dry outer layers of skin from the onion. And we're going to do that for both of them. And so I always do it the same way actually. I chop the top off the onion and then I chop it in half from the roots down to that cut edge. And then you can find the edges of those drier layers and just peel them right off, leaving you with the nice kind of really wet inner layers. They're the ones that we want for our cooking. So, nearly done with mine. And then all of these bits that we've taken off, so the outer layers of skin, the roots, the stalks, if you pop those in a bowl, those can go out on your compost heap and they'll do wonderful things for your garden. So let's pop the rest of that in there. And then I'm just going to really quickly whiz through this because as I say, you've seen it loads of times before, but we're just going to chop off that top stalk if we haven't already, because I realised I did it on some and not on all of them. And then my favourite way, using that claw that we always talk about, cut your onion from the cut edge down towards the roots, not going all the way to the roots at this point. Hopefully you can see this, because I've realised that I've set up the camera to show you the pan, but that means you can't see this in a close-up but I've just basically chopped across the onion and then I'm going to turn it so I've got that cut edge again and I'm just going to cut across my other cuts so it gives me these lovely little bits of onion like this. So rather than make you watch me do this three more times, I'm going to speed up the footage and do it super fast so that we can carry on cooking our soup. I don't know about you, but whenever I've chopped lots and lots of onion, it always makes my eyes go a little bit tingly. They do say that onions make you cry, don't they? So now you can see I've got a big pile of chopped onion here. So I'm going to turn on my little hob. And I want this on a really low temperature because we're basically going to sweat off our onions, which means we're going to let them get really soft and translucent, which means you can kind of see through them a bit. Um, and it will take a while for them to do that, but that's fine because we've got that nearly half an hour still of the time that our butternut squash is in the oven. So into the pan, over that low heat, I'm going to put a tablespoon of that olive oil and around about a tablespoon of butter as well. I'm also going to add in a little pinch of salt because we know, don't we, it's really important to put seasoning in our food to make it taste delicious. So that was a pinch of salt and I put in two pinches of pepper. And then I'm going to add in that onion very carefully so I don't spill it. And normally when I say I'm going to do it carefully so I don't spill it or I don't make a mess, I end up making a mess. So i actually very proud of myself. Then I'm just going to give that a little bit of a stir around so that the oil coats all of the onion and then what will happen is you'll see that butter will start to melt as well. But while we're waiting for that to happen I'm going to add in my garlic puree and I like lots of garlic but you can adjust this if you prefer less. And the same goes for the chilli as well. On the recipe I've put to use half a teaspoon of dried chilli flakes, but if you don't really like spicy food, you can of course reduce that. And if you really do like spicy food, you can always use a little bit more. So, have a go, see what you think. And you can always use a bit more on the top as a garnish as well. I'm just going to give this another good stir to spread that garlic, that chilli and everything around so it mixes in with the onion and then whoopsie 
I'm going to pop a lid on my pan and I'm just going to leave that now for as long as my butternut squash is in the oven. You might decide you want to give it a bit of a stir after about 10 minutes or so, just to make sure nothing's sticking. But as long as you've got that temperature really, really low, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So again, so you're not just watching me, I'm going to jump ahead to the first time I stir mine, so that you can see the sort of thing you're looking for. So again, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and can you see all the water that's on the lid of my pan at the moment? So that shows you that all the water is coming out of the onion, but it's getting trapped by that lid and staying in the pan. And that's going to make our, our onion really soft and, and light and really yummy. So I'm going to take that lid off, hold it over the top, and you should see now as well that all that butter has melted and it's just, oh, it smells amazing actually. I wish you could smell it too. I'm just going to pop that down and give this a really good stir quickly. And then I'm going to pop that lid back on for about another 10 to 15 minutes until my butternut squash is ready. And then it will be time to kind of assemble everything together, which is the most fun part of making this soup. But it's actually really quick as well. Literally, just over half an hour, a really hearty homemade soup. But anyway, yes. I'm gonna jump ahead one more time and next time I see you, it will be time to bring all of those ingredients together and turn them into our soup. So again, for one more time, I will see you soon. Bye. Okay, so it's been about another 15, 20 minutes and I now have my roasted butternut squash, which is over here. I have made up a litre of vegetable stock and I've just made mine using some of those stock pots that you can buy. But you can of course use fresh homemade vegetable stock if you have that, or you can even buy vegetable stock kind of ready made up in liquid form as well. So any of those will absolutely be fine. And then if we have another look at this onion, doesn't that look amazing? It's almost creamy now. It's so, so good. So what we're going to do now, and you might need to get an adult to do this bit for you as well because it's a bit tricky. I'm going to grab either a tea towel or some oven gloves or something like that and I'm going to spoon my butternut squash into the pan with the onion and it's got a really lovely golden brown colour on the edges so that tells me that it's ready. It should have softened up quite nicely as well. So I'm just scooping it out of the pan the roasting tin, I should say, and into the pan. And again, you might need to get an adult to do this bit for you because the roasting tin will be quite heavy and of course it's very, very hot. And then I'm going to pop that over here to the side. And the last thing we're going to do is add in, well, the second to last thing actually, the last second to last ingredient Oh dear, there you go, there's that mess I was talking about, is add in that one litre of vegetable stock. I'm going to bring the heat up just a little bit, just so that it starts to simmer. And at the moment, really, all we've got in here in terms of ingredients is that butternut squash, and onion, and then some seasoning and things. So really, this soup allows that, that squash, whether it's pumpkin, butternut squash, or whatever you've chosen to use, really allows it to just really shine. Really is yummy. And actually I was thinking, if you're not a fan of chili and spice, another thing that goes really well with squash is curry. So if you add, instead of the chili powder, you add say maybe a, a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of curry powder, you get a really nice curried butternut squash soup instead. So same recipe, two different types of soup. Okay, so this is starting to come together. So the last ingredient, and this is the last ingredient, I've got 200 grams of creme fraiche here. Now that is just gonna turn it into a really nice creamy soup. So I've just popped that in. I'm going to give it a stir around, but don't worry, it won't mix in straight away. But the final step, and the most exciting one, is the one that's really going to bring all of this together and it's using one of my favourite kitchen gadgets too. So there we go, so we'll leave it at that 
and hopefully now it will become clear why we needed the big pan because I'm going to use my stick blender which looks like this. Now my one has lots of different attachments so I'm using the, the, the normal blender attachment here and what I like about this one is if you hold it upright it's got a special guard that stops you getting splashed which is really important when you're blending something hot. So I'm going to turn the heat off because I don't want to be blending over the heat and then I'm going to bring that pan over here in front of me and again your adult might need to do this bit for you because we do want you to be as safe as possible but then I'm just going to take my stick blender pop it in the top and then I'm finding those chunks of butternut squash and I'm just going to blend them down so and what this is going to do is kind of get rid of all those lumps and just give me a lovely smooth soup do this in a normal blender, but most blenders are not designed to be used in really hot liquids. So what you might need to do is let your soup cool down a little bit, and then when it's kind of more of a, a, a warm rather than hot, pop it in your blender in batches, blend it down, and then put it back in the pan just to reheat it ready to serve. And actually, that's a really good way to store the soup as well. It's absolutely something you can make in advance, and then when you're ready to eat it, just pop it back on the hob and bring it back up to temperature again. And then once you've finished blending your soup with your hand blender, you've got a couple more options as well. If you want a really, really smooth soup, you can try passing it through a metal sieve just to remove any final lumps or anything like that. Or of course, like we talked about before, you could then let it cool down slightly and put this into your normal blender and just give it a final whiz up there as well. But I'm quite happy with the texture that I get from using my stick blender. So let's serve this up and give it a taste. Okay, so I've got my ladle, I've got my bowl, and I'm just going to scoop some of this lovely soup into that bowl there. And this makes quite a lot of soup as well, so you've probably got enough for dinner and a little bit left over as well. So again, if you want to keep it, just pop it in the fridge in a sealed container, and then pop it back on the hob when you're ready to reheat it. Okay, but without much further ado, should we give this a try? Mm. So you get that lovely flavour from the butternut squash or the pumpkin or whatever you're using. There's the tiniest, tiniest hint of heat from that chilli, but not too much because we only use that half a teaspoon. And it's so beautifully creamy because of that creme fraiche as well. It really is absolutely scrummy. So if you have a leftover pumpkin or your carved pumpkin isn't looking too old and tired and you want a really creative way to recycle it so it doesn't go to waste why not have a go at my spicy squash soup and uh, of course if you do don't forget to head over to the Kenwood Kids Club website and upload a picture of your finished make so that we can celebrate it with you and of course who knows you could be announced as the winner of this month's Star Baker of the Month competition, scooping yourself up your very own Kenwood Kids Club goodie bag and your own Kenwood hand mixer as well. In fact, we are now in November, so I am delighted that I get to announce this uh, last month's, I should say, Star Baker of the Month. So I'm going to pop them up on screen right now so you can all see their amazing bake, and hopefully this time next month it will be your name that I am announcing. But once again, congratulations to our winner and thank you to all of you for joining me once again in the Kenwood Kids Club. And don't forget, I'll be back at the same time next week with a really, with a really, with another really fun and tasty recipe for you to try. Until then, stay safe, take care and as always, happy baking. Bye everyone.